What's up guys, Ryan here. So today I'm gonna to do a video talking about avoiding trademark infringement. And uh, I thought this was relatively straightforward, but um, some people have voiced to me that there is some confusion surrounding it, so I wanna clear that up. Also, I'm releasing this video as a part of my Amazon Merch mini course. If you're interested in joining, it's free. Might as well check it out, right? You'll get daily uh, emails with various, I guess I just break down the, uh, the whole Amazon Merch process for beginners. I don't want to say start to finish. It's not like as thorough as it could possibly be because I am also developing in parallel a full-blown Amazon merch course that I intend to sell. But the mini course will take you through basically from getting started and uh, get you through designing, researching, avoiding trademarks, optimizing your workspace for Amazon merch, uh, various other things. So check it out. It's free. Link is right there in the description. Anyways, guys, talking about avoiding trademark infringement. So to start, uh, I just want to say Amazon Merch has an official content policy. There's a link here from this article on my blog post. I'll put a link there in the description too. But it is worth reading the content policy. They update this uh, over time as the content policy evolves. It has evolved over time. It will continue to evolve from the you know date that I make this video of in June of 2019. If you're watching it in the future, the content policy is very likely changed. Also, like when they expanded Amazon Merch to the UK and Germany, there's like different content policies for there. So sometimes I'll be using, um, I'll be uploading, using the beta uploader and uploading one shirt to like every marketplace and it gets rejected there, but nowhere else. And it, it's just one of those things you got to be familiar with content policies. Also, the uh, youth content policy, if you did not know this, there's a stricter content policy for any shirts that are offered in youth sizes. So, for instance, like, the word beer, that's not going to fly. Like, if you use the standard uploader, not, not even the beta, just standard, and you know how you can check for a standard t-shirt, standard uploader, men, uh, male, female, and youth? Well, if you check that box for youth and you put the word beer then it's going to get rejected for all three as a single submission. That's one rejection. If you did not check the box for youth and all it said was beer, then you're you're okay to offer it in male and female adult sizes. So just know that that's, um, that's a thing now. It didn't used to be. Uh, this, is, this is actually kind of old news. This was 2018, so it's not that long ago. But if you're new to Amazon Merch, it's worth noting that anytime you offer shirts in youth size, you got to be very careful. Also, uh, Reddit, uh, the Amazon Merch subreddit had worked together to build a list of gotcha words. Let me see. That list is available right here. I will put a link in the description. Uh, I don't know if this is still being maintained, but again, Amazon will not just go out and say like, hey, when we updated our algorithm to look for certain words, here are the words. They don't say that. So you kind of have to like figure it out on your own. <laughs> based on the vague content policy. So this is a pretty useful link to see um, gotcha words for youth sizes. Moving on, tools to help you protect your merch account. Guys, I know I said we're gonna look at the, the USPTO database, look at trademarks. First and foremost, I just had to cover like the content policy. I wanna give you, this is a big time suggestion. I love this add-on, it is completely free. It's called Merch Security, it's a Chrome extension. It does exactly what you see here in this picture. All right, like if you're typing in the brand, title, bullets, description, and you misspell the word shirt and spell a profanity word that I don't know if I should say on YouTube, like it will highlight in red. And if you put a word that they know is a gotcha or trigger word that'll get your submission rejected, it highlights the whole field in red. Um, I'm not aware if it's updated for the beta uploader, but I know it works for the standard and it has saved me a bunch of rejected submissions from just typos alone. You misspell the word shirt and forget the R that typo will cost you a, a strike against your account. So merch security, it is a free Chrome extension. I will put a link in the description. You should go get it. Um, I can't think of a reason not to use it. All right. Next. Uh, oh yeah. And then also when uh, someone and also someone brought this up to me i don't know what they uh, i don't know if they were like are is it like an argument point or if they're just kind of stating it because it's true um but if you have five thousand different t-shirts live on amazon merch and so they're live so they're you had the right to upload them 
each of those 5,000 unique designs can be trademarked in the future. And there's nothing you can do other than trademark them yourself to stop somebody from doing it. And if they get trademarked in the future, eventually Amazon Merch's automated detection will remove your shirt and put a strike against your account. And it's nothing to do with you or me or anybody. This applies to everybody across the board that's using Amazon Merch. This is just one of the realities of how it works. Um, then there are people who abuse the system, by the way, too. I don't want to go off too much of a tangent, but like some people will trademark like a sequence of two words. And then if that sequence of two words is in a design on any platform, they'll just manually report it. And it's super annoying when it's not actually like what they trademarked. Uh, pl a lot of platforms, it, the whole system's automated because all the scale involved with print on demand is so large that they just automate it. And um, the person who does the, the submits the trademark infringement wins pretty much always. So it really sucks. But not to deter you from doing print on demand, just know that this is a, this is a thing. Anyways, Merch Informer and also my friends at Merch Titans Automation. Or, this isn't part of their automation tool. It's just Merch Titans. But they both have tools where you can upload a list of... It's not really like trademarks, I guess. It's just like your t-shirts. Like if you have your... Uh, what is a good t-shirt example? Like a beer Olympics t-shirt. I always like that example for some reason. Beer Olympics. Like that's not trademarked for use on t-shirts. But if it was to be in the future, their automated tools will check against the USPTO database every day to see if your uh, the list of things you tell it to check eventually get trademarked. And then they try to alert you ahead of time so that you can remove the shirts yourself before the automated detection system removes them and you get strikes against your account. So it's worth checking out if you have a big catalog of designs live for sale on Amazon Merch. Merch Informer is the one that I put in this article. There's also one at uh, Merch Titans who are probably my preferred partner. I use it um, I use it for my designs. It works great. <laughs> it, it works really well too if you're using the automation tool because you, then you've already got all of your things that you would want to monitor the trademark status on in a list so you can just copy paste it super easy super simple and helps you avoid trouble next and this is probably why you came so i apologize for the delay but getting to using the uspto database to avoid trademark infringement so whenever i'm starting a new design the first thing i do is i check the uspto database to see if it is protected so let's go to the uspto uh, the website is tmsearch.uspto.gov all right, so tmsearch.uspto.gov. When you go there, first thing you want to do is click basic word search, basic word mark search. The design mark search searches, I am not a fan of. Um, the search functionality is very limited. And I've never ran into an issue where a design was trademarked that I somehow perfectly recreated that got rejected. This never happened to me. So in like 14,000 submissions. All right, so basic word mark search. We click here. All right, now I'm gonna go parallel with the article on my website. All right, so we're gonna look up the term chicken butt. Maybe we wanna make a chicken butt t-shirt. All right, so I'm gonna type in chicken butt. All right, and then we search. Now, you'll notice there are results. Sometimes you'll type something in and there will be no results. Like if I remove the space between chicken and butt and I search, uh, there actually was, all right, bad example. Uh, chicken Z Z Z. All right. When there's no results like this, you're completely good to go. You don't even have to think twice about it. All right. But if I go back to this chicken butt example, there were results. So now we need to kind of parse through these. All right. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. So the first thing I like to do when there's results like this, just for quickly being able to scan the results, because we only need to look at exact string matches and a string just means a string of characters to form words. So an exact string match means that I can hit control F on windows and I can type in what I want Chrome to highlight. So I just hit control F. It launched the search prompt and I typed in chicken butt. Now you can see highlighted in yellow by Google Chrome. It's highlighting where that exact string match occurs on this page. And you can see there's five matches, but only three of them are inside the search results. <laughs> So the first one says chicken butt nuggets, all right? And that is not an exact match because they added the word nuggets. Now, in regards to Amazon merch, I still wouldn't risk it, all right? If chicken butt nuggets is trademarked, like I would 
I wouldn't just say, oh, okay, this isn't the exact same, so I'm good. I'm going to do a little bit more research in case I did for some reason want to make a t-shirt that said chicken butt nuggets. Okay? So the next thing I would do for chicken butt nuggets specifically is I would come over here to where it says live dead and look at what it says, literally. So if it says dead, you don't have to worry about it. All right? There's like, I think it's annual renewal fees for trademarks. So a lot of them go dead. If it says live, now we need to take it seriously. Even though, and again, this isn't how it should work, but because all of this is like algorithmically driven and Amazon merch is not perfect, if chicken butt nuggets, so I'm going to click this because it is live. If this says shirts, so this is the next thing that we're doing. We're going into the actual record. We have to look in uh, on this list right here of what it's protected for use on for the word shirts or clothing. If it says clothing, I mean, sometimes they get away with really broad. So it says clothing, but it says pet clothing. So chicken butt nuggets, while we are only trying to make a shirt that says chicken butt, this would, because it doesn't have shirts on there, I think we're okay. If chicken butt nuggets did have shirts protected, I would not personally proceed because you're rolling the dice there with Amazon merch potentially picking up a uh, what it would consider a match and rejecting you. All right, so chicken butt nuggets is good. Chicken butt, this is an exact string match. So we need to pay attention, except if we look over here, it's not live, it's dead. So we don't even need to worry about it. It's That's not applicable to us. And then down here, chicken butts, dead. So we're good, chicken butt. That can be used on a t-shirt. So I think I made a little uh, demo shirt. So that would be good to go on Amazon Merch because we just did the research and that is uh, not protected. So what happens when something is protected? Well, I have an example queued up. So we're gonna do a new search for someone in Texas loves me. Okay, we search that and we see two results. One is dead and one is live. So let's just go ahead and open both. Now I did say that normally we don't have to look at the dead ones, but this was actually the one that I had prepared in my example. So when I wrote this article on my website, I believe it was live. Yeah, it was. But as you can see, trademarks do expire. They're not automatically, not everybody renews them. So what ended up happening was from the time I wrote this article to today, this trademark expired. But if this said live, then we would absolutely not be able to use the text, someone in Texas loves me, to, like, to be associated with any of our Amazon merch uploads. And even though this does also include like a graphic mark, that doesn't matter because the text alone, again, like Amazon Merch's automated detection is not a lawyer. It's just a very, you know, it's not like very basic, but it's pretty basic algorithm that someone over there wrote to check designs and primarily text string matches against people's submissions. And so as of recording this video, this is okay because it's dead. But again, guys, like, when I wrote this article, you can see here in the search results, it was live and this would have resulted in a rejection. So that's pretty much it. You don't really have to worry too much about, again, like the uh, design marks. They're called design marks where people can trademark like a actual design like you see here with the someone in Texas loves me specific design. Like the text Amazon merch is not a lawyer. They do not care. They reserve the right to reject your submissions. So even if you think you're in the right to do something based on your results here, my personal recommendation is to not really risk it. Um, that's pretty much what I would say. Just play it safe guys. You don't want to get strikes against your account. You don't want to deal with getting banned or, you know, you can get, you can actually get suspended and get your account back. But for the most part, when you get your account suspended, that's, going to be the termination and you're gonna have to say goodbye to your amazon merch account and like i always say like free money doesn't really exist these days but amazon merch is like the closest thing you can find to free money you don't ever have to give them a credit card on file you literally just use the program and get paid out every month i mean you can't beat it so be careful with your account guys take care of it bookmark the uspto website get used to using it for the most part it's very simple for the most part there's not going to be any uh search results 
like the average the average result when you look up something on ams on the uh, uspto database is this right here and that means you are good to go all right guys and that's it for today's video if you liked it please hit that like button please consider subscribing any questions comments or feedback hit me up in the comments below and i'll see you at the next one